welcome to Notes from Lisha Sang. Na, 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 na. <laughs> yeah, the roof is progressing. We've got about a third of the front of it slated. Um, and now we're moving on to the next bit. We've stripped off and we've just started battening it. So we'll get that done over the next few days and then we can slate that bit. And then we'll strip the last bit of the front and slate that bit and then that'll be done. So we should get the front done. I don't know. By the end of August, say. Ooh, um, is that an the, actual date? Well, it should be. And then <laughs> the back, we've stripped off about, probably about half nearly. Mm. Um, it's really horrible stripping it off of the back because it's so, the slate's so worn out that just it like just dust. turns into dust yeah. every time you pull it off. Uh, and it's it's been really hot for wearing masks and stuff, so we're just trying to do it first thing in the morning. But it'll get there. It's At least it is progressing now, which is good. Yeah, it, you've got a sense of achievement now because you're seeing it change. Mm. I think when you're working on the purlins and the structure, it just looks like a big hole, nothing's changing. Then the rafters go on. Yeah. And then it looks different. But then yeah, there's I think so all much the adjustment. Are on at the front. Yeah. I don't think we need to do any more rafters on the front. Well, maybe one at the very end. Mm. And then the battens have to go on, and there's a lot of adjustment. It's an old building. Things have settled. Things have changed. We need to work out whether the old battens are stronger. The old rafters are strong enough. Um, yeah. Some are just sort of bent. And well, just... we've replaced about half on the front, haven't we? Yeah. And probably yeah. about the same on the back. I yeah. think we'll need replacing just over half. Of I the... think some of the roof was drier yeah. and better, but. Yeah. When June came and we had the most enormous ice storm and with just ice balls the size of tennis balls and that put pay to what was left yeah. of a fairly dry any, roof. Any bit that was dry isn't now. Mm. Um, every single bit of it got smashed to pieces really. Mm, the, I mean, because the slate was so weak. Uh, yeah, it's not. So yeah. the new bit we had, they had yeah, tiled that, and roofed a new section, and that was fine. And the slate on there was fine. A few chips, which was a bit annoying. Yeah, I had to replace three slates, I think, mm. but they were on the edge, so they were. Well, there was only one layer. Yeah. I think that's why they chipped. Yeah. And similarly on the house, there are a few bits and bobs. So we're looking at a potential insurance claim for that, but it was proclaimed a natural disaster, yeah. and lots of houses in our area have got the same problem. Um, Unlike us, they're not doing their we own roofs. We weren't expecting to do yeah. roofing. So we, we, were, yeah, we're we were expecting away. to replace every roof here, yeah. and we're halfway through the barn, which is the biggest one, and we've got we've got sort of slates and plans to do the other bits. So it's a bit annoying for us, but nothing more really. Yeah. Whereas for some people, it's pretty much well, it's devastation, really. isn't it? It's, yeah. They've got massive bills. They've got long waits. They've got polythene on the roof. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, the house roof is dry. Thankfully, our house roof was yeah. stood up to it. it. And smashed other than a, um, we had to, we've had to tape looks. up one of the roof lights. Mm. Um, so we've just put very thick kind of roofing tape on that. And that'll, that'll do until we get around to sorting mm. it out. There's no rush. So other than that setback, it's been, you know, just a lot of hard work and mm. keeping on, keeping on. So month by month, we've done a lot. And I've shown you the progress in the video. Um, it's... Obviously, as I said, been a while, so there's a lot to catch up on. Um, we don't have the luxury of being full-time vloggers. <laughs> we don't get paid for the videos, so I'm sorry if you've been waiting for a video. It's it's here. Um, we do have a full-time job as um, software development people, um, and that obviously it's takes been priority. Very, been very full-time recently. Yeah, it's been very full-time. Yeah, <laughs> so that takes priority, and uh, yeah. Lots of work and it's all happening. The sun's out. I got sunburned as well, didn't I? You did. On the roof, because when you're yeah. on the roof, yeah, it's, really it's more intense, intense because the black tiles sort of well, bounce it back up. Yeah, you. I mean, you can't at this time of year. We can only work on there. And we can't. I mean, what time anyway, because we're working. But we can only get up on the roof sort of between about seven in the morning and nine in the morning and about the same seven and nine in the evening. Mm. The slates are literally too hot to touch. Yeah. You burn yourself on them. Other yeah. than that, it's, it's but, yeah. It does mean that it's a slow but steady pace, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you don't get fed and up with it. And you don't want to be fatigued on a roof. No. You know, so I think we're happy with the progress. It is slow. Our neighbours all trundle past. <laughs> wave at we us on the roof. should be selling tickets. Yeah, we should be selling <laughs> tickets. Yeah. So we hope you're enjoying the videos. It's a bit rambly today, but we just wanted to share with you the sunshine, sat in the garden, what it's like here, and, you know, the peace and quiet and tranquility. The veggies are all coming along in the garden. 
and uh, life's good here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, we've got some more visits back to the UK and we'll be seeing family and friends again. We've got lots more new friends here out in France as well. So, And it's during June and July, it's a real busy season yeah. with lots of fets and celebrations and you've got obviously the 14th of July. So, uh, yeah, lots of singing, dancing and having a good time, which is all part of it. Yeah, it's good. Once there was a floor covered in earth and hay. Now it's nearly gone. Oh, what a horrible dusty job. It is. Lots and lots get it down. of clay earth. Moved everything out of the barn, covered up other things. Dusty things. Have that on the floor. Oh yeah, let's have a look. Just had it. Oh, very good wormed. Plenty of firewood. I'm sure we can make some lovely things out of all these bits of wood. So yeah. This floor had quite a few holes and pallets and bendy floorboards. So it's been quite the challenge to move. How thick would you say it was? Oh, four, four or five inches. What's that in centimetres? 125, 125 mil. Mm. Thick. Yeah, quite thick and very heavy. Heavy, yeah, with lots of hay on top as well. Dusty. And lots of holes so you can't actually stand on it, so you have to do it from below on the ladder. To remove it all. The more joys the better than others. But yeah. Repair work. Get the tower up this side now. And we'll be able to start sorting this side of the barn. It's very dusty in the barn right now. But the earth that was on the floor is reduced. And we'll be taking those beams out. So exciting! And with the earth that we take off, we just fill in this section, which is mainly rocks. And it was a concretey floor at the bottom where um, it had broken up. So we've replaced and we'll put the old stone floor in around it. But uh, we're going to just carry on with the concrete here, that's Bert in the background and to finish that entrance way you can see all the pipes for the electricity and water so if Bert wants to come and play, it's too dusty for Bert so you're going to have to sit out there in the sunshine you're in the sunshine Bert okay, I love you too The fourth step is in, and the whole landing area is covered in concrete. So we now have a platform onto which we can put a wooden floor. today time to start battening out <coughs> heights oh it's been a chilly night minus four so defrosting the battens is the first job this morning 
I've put them into the sunshine over here and we're just taking all the protective wrapping off the roof to expose it and actually start getting the rafters on. Hello, you with us in the sunshine? Put your jumper on, it's still cold isn't it? So yeah, he likes to be outside and watch what we're doing. Keeps him entertained, as you can see, it's beautiful blue skies. The front of the house is in the sun. So, off we go. Here's the progress so far, we're over a third of the way up. And Simon's just cut in some battens just to fill the gaps as we go along. So this is the side that we're working on. The roof changes in its height. Oops. The roof changes in its height halfway along. So we've got to rectify that as we go, shaping the rafters to the purlin. But this first section where the major hole was is now starting to look like a roof again. So we're making the most of the beautiful weather at the moment. Another icy cold day, but 16 degrees on the roof. So that's the place to be on the roof in the sunshine. So I just wanted to show you some of uh, the finishing off details that Simon's been working on. Right, so we've got the upstand done um, and fitted, and the next job to do is to put, as you can see, it's just got a rough edge to it. So I've got some oak, which is light oak, fairly similar in colour to the ash, um, which will be fine. And I'm going to cut a channel out the bottom of it, so it just sits onto that and covers over the rough edge there where it's been sawn. So that'll just cap that off and then that'll be finished. Then we've got some lighting going behind it. So to do that, I've got the router table set up and just basically pass this over it a few times until we've got the right size of the channel. Okay, so what I've got here uh, is a router table with a quite powerful router attached to it. And I'm just using that to cut out a channel in the bottom. Um, so pass this over and then you can see it cuts, it starts cutting a channel. Uh, and then you can, what happens is you just do a little bit at a time, clean the cut, and then you can just get this in, and you can just turn that, and that lifts the cutting head, and that cutter head then will cut deeper until I've got to the depth I want. So when you pass it backwards and forwards, getting deeper and deeper, and you finish up with a, a channel then there, and that channel is 40 mil wide, which is the width of the uh, upstand that we've got. So that'll just sit down onto it. Right, so once that's done, the final thing is I just plane it uh, with a hand plane, just to, to smooth it off and to give you a really nice finish. And then once that's done, we'll uh, osmo it, just to protect it, so if any water splashes on it, just wipe off. And then that's it, done. Come on there. Okay, so cut the channel out. And then it just... Slots on, just like that. Okay, so on this end bit here, I'm gonna cut a thin piece of oak, almost like a veneer really, that'll just sit onto that, and then along there, and that'll just cap all that off. Today I've been painting Tungan Groove in a nice charcoal gray finish. And the idea here, is to box in where all the pipes and utilities go and this sits on our worktop and then the shelving unit will go onto here and disguise our extractor and the extractor pipe so that bit will all be built in so that's the plan and we've just fitted the first part of the tongue and groove section and we'll be fitting in the shelves over the next few weeks. Uh, it's just unbelievable how long it all takes. It's looking but, great though. Yeah, Simon's it's, it's, done an amazing job. So that's the side of the kitchen that's almost complete. 
and then we are going to put a unit in here to house all of this stuff. So Simon's put the shelf together, that's all jointed and ready to go. And now we've just got to fit it into position. So we've finished off the shelving here um, and the only thing I've got to do is this piece of uh, laminate that's cut down to make a backsplash at the back of the cooker and the back of the uh, nice work surface here. This has got to go in and have an oak top behind it. That's it, and then it'll be done. Frost and a yeah, bit of end snow. Of March, it was March. It went from yeah. being warm, from being kind of sit outside and have lunch warm, mm. 17, 18, 19 degrees it's at wonderful. lunchtime. And by the end of the week, uh, the last week of March, it was snowing and we had at least three or four inches of snow on the ground, which was a really bad timing for the bees. It was um, okay for the fruit, they were sort of insulated. Yeah, it wasn't that cold, but it was it was snowy just as the bees were coming out and mm -hmm. emerging and starting to forage, and that just unfortunately finished, finished off the, small the bees. Hive, there wasn't, yeah. yeah, I mean, there wasn't a particularly strong colony, but I think it would have made it through mm -hmm. had it not been for that really cold snap. Um, they did leave us some about, honey. Yeah, we got some honey. It only lasted about four days, and then it warmed up again. There's the honey frame that the bees made all by themselves. Aren't they clever? We don't have a spinner, which is what you would do. You can put sort of four of these in and spin it and the honey gets thrown out, but we haven't got one of them. So we're just chopping out a little bit at a time. After that, we cleaned out the hive, um, took some honey out of it, got the best kind of six full-size frames that we've got uh, with, with, you know, with lots of wax on and a little bit of honey in some of it. And we put that into the small box that we've got and I just put that on top of a log, sort of in the hope that some bees would find it. And fairly amazingly, about six weeks after putting it out, uh, we looked out one morning and there was a big cloud of bees in yeah. the general area of that box. So we went out and looked and sure enough, they they were swarming into it. And uh, yeah, by the end of the day, they'd all moved in. Yeah. So that's about so three weeks ago now. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going to show you that next. Yeah. Took the capping off and straining it in here and eating it as we go, very naughty. I don't know if you can hear or see it, but we're just in the middle of a bee swarm and Simon has a new newt box just below. Whether they'll all fit in that, I don't know, but if I'm quiet now, you should have, be able to hear them. Very happy bees. Simon is absolutely over the moon. So just over an hour and that huge swarm, they have decided that this is the place they're going. And they're queuing up now to get into a very small hole, into their little insulated box where we'll let them get established and then transfer them to a bigger box. on the outside of the front they're, of it are orienting. Yeah, they're definitely doing that figure of eight. Yeah.
clover lawn for our happy bumblebees. And there are so many different types and species. Here's a really cute little white one. Two busy yellow stripy ones, buff tails. Butterflies in the woodland and some evening primrose flowers from a friend. So a quick view of the barn and the roof in progress. Strip in the next section now. It's a good time to show you the various stages of roofing. So here's where all the tiles have been damaged from storms and just old tiles. You can see where we've boarded over to try and protect it, but it is time for it to come off. So the next stage is stripping the tiles. So that's what we're doing here. Using the ladder, roof ladder, removing each tile, either dropping down the shaley old bits onto the floor below or bringing them down to throw into the wheelbarrow. There's the ridge and then you've got the new section with new battens and purlins and rafters and the new tiles and we need to sort out some new ridge tiles and the guttering is just starting to appear as well. So that's the process. Now we know that we should obviously strip the whole roof and do the whole thing in one, but with only two of us and having to work on our business as well, DIY and roofing has to be taken in stages. So this is the section that we're working on at the moment. So, if you thought that the barn wasn't a big enough project, you can always turn your hand to some woodland clearing. Let's go and see our honeybees. The bees are very happy 